Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, here with my co-host, Chad Lutsky, and we're writing, collaborating on a novel together, uh, tentatively entitled Planet Caravan. Uh, we've been, this is like stream number eight, I believe. Uh, we've done plenty of writing today. What's, what's, what's the game plan, Chad, or you want me to pick what we do today? Doesn't matter to me. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I do want to note. For people watching, that we are at nine thousand two hundred sixty-one words. Almost, almost to the. I have a fifteen k hump, like when I know that a story. I, I like have all the bones and everything to layer everything on top of it. Um, and I'm always, even though that it's rare that I don't finish what I start. Um, I know once I get over those those fifteen thousand words, I'm seeing it to fruition. So. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say I'm already there with this one, just to waylay any fears anyone might have. I'm already here with this one because we, we planned it out so far. It's like we're past that 15K anyway. Um, we know, I mean, we even have like the subtle details about uh, the guy who runs the carnival and all that stuff. I need mm -hmm. to post this up on Discord. That's what I forgot to do. Uh, morning, Moxie. All right. Uh, Discordian.com. Yeah, I'll share it around too. Uh, share a little. Morning, Brad. How you doing? Morning, Viking. Afternoon from the UK. Well, good morning from America, Moxie. Hope you're doing fantastic. Hey, Brad, how you doing? Viking, how are you? If I just repeat myself, I'm sorry. I'm still not quite awake. Hey, everybody. Hey, your boy was approaching burnout. Had to cancel yesterday. I was, uh, I was working on... I have another project that I'm working on. And then a whole other project. I'll talk about that up front. But a whole other project... Uh, that I started too. So now I'm three projects deep. Um, uh, and I was writing on a brand new project uh, called Folk Whore. W-H-O-R-E. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Urban Dictionary says, it, I was wondering if it was like a title because it could go either way. It could be like you're replacing lore in folklore or like folk horror. You know, that's what I, court. that's, yeah, yeah, that's where my brain um, went. Um, and I, but I love things. I love that kind of wordplay. Like the bedding of boys has multiple different meanings. Uh, sound of broken ribs, multiple different meanings. Uh, South of here, dozens of fucking re meanings throughout the book. Um, anyways, so I was, th I, I got, got to writing and I was, it, it got so bad. I mean, the, the ideas were coming, of course, faster than I could get them out that's usually the problem that i have um and then i forget certain things but i literally changed a character's name halfway through the first chapter and never noticed and then sat there reading it over for 10 minutes trying to figure out where this new character came from not realizing <laughs> that i had just fucked up the the character's name I and mean, it was completely different names too i just anyways at that point i was like okay i can't even see straight at this point i can't keep my character straight so uh yeah i need to tell chad i need to i need to day off <laughs> <clears throat> it was it was bad when i started doing that yes yeah, it's, it's it's time to take a break but uh i like the, i like the name i like the title it reminds me of uh um uh, john Bowden and i started a book called um trailer park coven and uh trailer park so covid coven like which well, is coven? coven? Coven. Okay. Okay, Coven. Sorry, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm not trying to pick on the way you said it. Is I've never heard anyone say it like that before. Uh, co yeah. Anyways, Coven. I, I, I think I think it's one of those words that every time I say it, I say it differently. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> I haven't made up my mind yet. Uh, uh, <clears throat> trailer Park Coven. Good, is it Coven? Okay. Yeah, Trailer Park Coven. Uh, it's it's exactly what it sounds like and. Uh, it's kind of like a, a grit lit white trash 
Coven. Um, yeah, it's funny, but it's uh, it's also gritty, and yeah, it's nowhere near done. But. <laughs> the uh, folklore. Uh, so I'm blending the two things. Um, I'm blending folklore and mm-hmm. uh, folk horror. Yep. Um, and making it all about this female character in this small town that everyone believes is promiscuous, but actually isn't. And at the same time, there is folk horror aspects. Uh, because Urban Dictionary, I, I, I came up with the title, and I was like, this has to, this has to be a book already. So mm-hmm. I went looking for it, couldn't find it. Um, but I did find the Urban Dictionary definition of folk horror, and that's exactly what folk horror is, is a, a woman everyone thinks is a horror, but isn't, is mm-hmm. actually a prude. Um, so blend those three things together, the Urban Dictionary definition, folklore, and folk horror. So everything works works well, well together. Cool. And I put it all as one word, so hopefully Amazon doesn't shadow ban the shit. But, uh, but if, I, if I go with a, I, I, I'm not independently publishing anymore, so um, it wouldn't matter anyways that those, those bigger companies get away with that shit. They can call their books whatever they want to. <clears throat> but even books like uh, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, um, they have the asterisk in there, so they might hide it no matter what. I don't know. Uh, hey, you could Supernova. put a, you could put a uh, little Blair Witch stick thing where the O is in horror. That's a, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I don't think it'll be anything more than a novelette or a novella. Um, it's a really quick idea, uh, and I don't know what I'll do with it. I might shop at the tour or some of the other folks doing novellas. I don't know. All depends on how long it ends up being, because I think there's another one under under undertow press that's doing these novelettes that are just super fucking short. They did one Nathan Ripley, uh, or sorry Nathan Rabham. Um, he writes under both names. Uh, came out with a, I think it was like a fifteen thousand word book called Help Meet, um, uh, Help M E E T, uh, and it's all one word. I haven't read it yet, but he's a, he's a great author. Um, one of the more unique thriller authors I've come across that, that haven't gone into the surreal or whatever. Uh, he's one of the only ones that in under, he writes, uh, under Nathan Ripley for those, but, uh, with, with his stuff, I, I find it extremely easy to pick apart modern day thrillers for whatever reason, maybe because I've watched a lot of TV, grew up watching Columbo, whatever it might be. Um, uh, Matt Locke, all that shit. Uh, and I just, I, I foresee this shit coming. And with his books and uh, I'm going to Oktar's books, I don't have any, uh, I, I never had that issue. <clears throat> so there's a select handful. Even uh, Carolyn Ketnis, the you books, I find unpredictable. But other people like normies say that they're hella predictable. So I don't know. Good morning, Zeely. Okay, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, I have to go back and read what Chad wrote anyways. Uh, So let's start off. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to read what Chad wrote. I'm not going to read it out loud unless uh, Chad wants to mute me. Um, And then I'm going to layer as I go or whatever. I I don't know. It all depends on what it needs, if it needs anything. Um, And then I'm going to start writing more on the chapter I left off on. Uh, in fact, I think that one's over. I'm not sure. But anyways, we're going we're gonna to get to work. If y'all get into work, it's time to work. <clears throat> you can replace the taboo letters with characters from another alphabet, like from Armenian or from Persian. Uh, but it has the same fon- phonic value. Uh, I don't want to give people false expectations that that's what the, you know, that like those characters or those cultures will be represented in the book, you know, and I don't just want to take someone else's culture just for like a, a letter. You know what I'm saying, Nova? I hope that came off right. That slides out. That's what I wrote last time. All right, we're going to go up here. 
uh, see what Chad did a bunch of writing and blending, um, rewriting all that stuff. So we're going to start there with uh, this first highlighted bit. <laughs> uh, you went back you went back and added if not that was one expensive bj <laughs> yeah uh, i think they're like 2700 dollars now inflation's crazy dang I still love the idea of Uncle DeWitt getting drunk and trying to hop a train, man. <laughs> without without a running start, oh man, he, that is such a that is such an amazing visual. With, <laughs> without saying shit else, you just yeah. you just see this man leap toward a train and just boom, it's just gone. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I need to make note of that. We got to do something with that. Great Grandma Charles Gold Tooth. I love little shit like that. I got. I got. I got an idea. I got an idea. Let it. Let it. Let it. Let it gestate. Let it marinate. Glad you fixed that. I stumbled all over myself. I remember writing that line. It was all different kinds of backwards and forward. And you mentioned the golden tooth on the windowsill again. Yes. Okay. Do something about that. Uh, I just see someone getting the golden tooth in the mail. Hmm. I don't know what it's an image. I don't know if I can make it work or fit or whatever, but that's an image that's stuck in my brain now. Like at the end, someone getting a gold tooth or 
finding the gold tooth at the end. Maybe maybe he heads back home. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck it. I got other shit to do. Um, well, he could. Just, he could. When he's leaving, he could be like, and and just because, you know, to add insult injury, or just because I, uh, uh, I felt like it. I took the tooth too. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yep. <laughs> How how fucking weird would it be if it like uh you know the relationship with Sheena got so so far that he gave her a promissory ring, and he had some motherfucker make, make since she's so weird and quirky, uh give her the put the fucking tooth on the ring, <laughs> so I can always remember where I came from and where I am now. <laughs> oh uh, gosh. Max, we're both pretty quick. I think. Uh, I mean, it all depends on how long the book is. But uh, with me, I can do 50K in about a week or two, something like that. And that's a rough draft. Um, but uh, I think Chad's a little slower than me, but not by much. And because I spend, he, he spends most of his time writing and rewriting as he goes. But all my time writing is spent on the back end, on rewriting. So just cutting things out and adding to it. So if you want to consider that into the process, me and Chad are probably about the same speed. I, I would, I would guess. So let's say a 50,000 word novel will take me in total a month, month and a half to, to finish and to where I'm happy with it to where it needs to go to submission or editing or whatever. What about you, Chad, unless you're busy working then, don't yeah, know. it's no, I'm not. I'm kind of reading along with you. Uh, okay. It's um, uh, it depends on where my headspace is at at the time. I guess uh, I can pull that off. I can pull, you know, and do that in a month. There are books like Deep Water that I wrote in ten days. Um, you know that that kind of thing happens. Uh, sometimes I'll get those books like Cannibal Creator, Three Smile, Same Deep Water, where it's like I just they're done super fast. You know, three three weeks. Or, but again, they're only 25,000, 30,000 words. So, uh, but that's, you know, fairly fast for me. But I would say that you probably write faster than I do anyway. Well, I mean, as far as a, dra a draft, yeah, I'm faster than most people. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm absurdly fast when it comes to, I don't, and also, Max, do not judge how you work based on the metric of how we work or anyone else for that matter. Yeah. No, no, um, no. Do, do what works for you. It doesn't matter how long it takes you. That's why you're asking. Um, if you're just wondering and you're curious, that's fine. But uh, just know that you shouldn't judge your own output based on anyone else's ever. I've also been doing this since literally since I was six years old, as far as writing and writing professionally since 2001, yeah. 2002. So, you know, if you're just starting this journey, do not expect to have the same output or maybe having even higher output right at uh, right at first because you're just bursting with ideas because you've lived your whole mm -hmm. life with ideas um, and you're just mm -hmm. bursting with them. And then it starts to slow down. That is completely, completely natural. We're not all Stephen King. <clears throat> we do not all have a novel a year or more in us. And there are authors of higher renown who only publish a book every seven to ten years. So keep that in mind. And I'm talking like big names like Thomas Harris, the author of the Cannibal, Hannibal series. Uh, Donna Tart, winner of the Pulitzer or Nobel. I can't remember which one. But she's won numerous rewards. So and she only, they, both of them only write a book every seven, seven to ten years. <clears throat> It's, it's rare that I fall in love with something that I wrote, but this, no, 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 no. I repeat the word in a stream of muttered utterances, the single syllable blending into the next until I sound like an idling motorcycle. It's just like, I don't know. Yeah. 
proud of that one. No, 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 no. Yeah, it, it does sound okay. I just, I always test things like that multiple times in my head to make sure I'm not forcing it. Oh, hang on. I just, I just realized something. Oh, you don't need to hang on. I just, uh, yeah, I got to upgrade. Hang on. I'm glad I remembered that. Uh, choose basic. No, not, no, not just fuck off. Sorry. I damn it. When they raised it to 25. Oh, well, it's whatever. Uh, talking about StreamYard? Yeah. Hmm. I did, I just did it. I almost I almost forgot about it. I just got it. So <clears throat> we're all good. We're all good. It would have cut us off. That's that's what I was I just suddenly I was like, I'm forgetting something. I don't know what I'm forgetting. Like there's something weighing on my mind. I think they give you a warning, don't they? They they might. I don't know. Um, I think but I'm do. not I'm not paying attention to this screen. So, and I don't know if it would pop up for you or I don't. I, what just whatever. Anyways, it's taken care of, um, and it's recurring. So, uh, on the ninth of every month. Okay. <clears throat> Remind, is Bruce a dog or a cat? It's a dog, right? Dog, yeah. Yeah, okay. Any idea what kind? Um, no. I figure, I might... I figure probably a, some kind of mutt. Some kind of oh, gotcha. like okay. mid mid-sized mutt or something. Mid mid-sized mutt, gotcha. Because I'm, I'm thinking about having, I don't know. I don't know. So, something's <laughs> marinating. Like a and shepherd and a lab and them. Yeah. Oh yeah. Retriever. It was a really cool dog. I had one when I was younger. It was a golden shepherd collie. Beautiful fucking dogs.
dude, this Grave Matters chapter is fucking on fire. Yeah. The description of the barn and everything is some of the best shit you've done. It's impressive. While the walls hang like the skin on a dying dying man's ribs, the ladder to the loft and the loft itself are sturdy, allowing us to climb and perch with no fear of falling through. An old tractor rusts in the center of the barn, packed with hay where animals have built nests over the years. There's a pitchfork stuck to the wall, an old rope with frayed ends next to that. There was another rope, but we used that to swing from a tree out near the gravel pits. That's 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 fucking narration worthy right now. Like that's <laughs> that's fucking sick. You literally, motherfucker, I was literally just clicking <laughs> on that to fix it. Literally, I'm glad we got that on tape. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, that's crazy. But, <laughs> uh. Dude, you were on fire when you wrote this. Cassidy's already got the top door open. Ass on the floor, legs dangling over the edge. I sit next to him and we stare out over the field as the sun begins to drop. The tops of the trees across the field are painted a sherbet orange. Their shadows falling on the field like a black curtain. Sixteen crosses made from twine and twigs jut from the long grass a good thirty feet from the barn. Just before the field starts to turn a wheat gold, this is Cassidy's graveyard. Ooh, shit. Goddamn. Ooh, shit, motherfucker. Goddamn. All right. Sorry I'm taking so long. I'm literally reading some of this shit like three or four times. That's cool, man. I'm impressed. <laughs> and a squirrel we could have used as a frisbee. Oh, Lord, Lord Jesus. What did I just read? That's amazing. All right, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Hey, you got me, got me juiced up now. Shit. I got to perform. <laughs> let's see here. Where
Okay, I'm caught up. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a break. When I get back, I'm gonna get to work. Okay. <clears throat> hey, do you want to share yours while I'm gone, or you just want to? Yeah, I can working? do that. <clears throat> All right, remove mine. Ooh. Hey, Alec. Sorry, just saw you. I've been working. There you go. All right, be back in a hot minute.
Alright, I'm back. Right, here we go. Try something. I don't know if I'm going to keep any of it. Use the wrong tail. Good job.
damn tummy growling. Sorry, guys. If you can even hear it. I don't know if you can. Mm-mm. Okay, good. I just told on myself then. My stomach's doing the digestive mambo.
Okay. <clears throat> I just finished that chapter. Okay. Um, the next one is will be where where uh, is there a spot where you have have you written anything yet for uh, they're back at home and then they Travis not, comes back. Not yet. I'm finishing up the uh, the night before that. Oh wait a second. No wait. I ha for when Trav comes back. Yeah, that's the Coke and a Smile chapter. Okay. Chapter heading. So. Okay, I see that. I see that. But I was just wondering if you would. I'll. I can throw it in there right now. But I was just wondering if you had a spot where, because we had fixed our timeline where Travis and Hunter are are gone, and then they and then they first come home. first come home oh before he calls the family meeting no yeah okay uh all i have is uh coconut smile which picks up after they've all gathered okay to to hang out well not to hang out but to listen to him man i got i i got i think some amazing shit down here but i'm not done yet so okay <sighs> i've got the uh yeah kind of like the touching conversation it's not a long chapter i didn't write a whole lot maybe you know three 400 words or something, but, um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm doing another flashback to mom and, a, a kind of like a lesson learned kind of thing where a story that she told him as a child finally makes sense. And I'm really, really fucking happy with it. I'm not, like I said, okay. I'm not done yet, but, uh, yeah, let me, let me get back to it. I'm sharing my screen now. Sorry guys. I forgot to share my end. Um, it was supposed to be me today, Chad. It was supposed to be me. Oh, you went you went on a break, so I know, I know, but I forgot to change it back over. I'm just picking on myself. Um, I get I did some foreshadowing, I guess, in the conversation. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll go back and read it after uh, after I get done with this, and while I'm doing that, uh, you can read the section I wrote. Unless you're continuing to work, it's whatever. Okay, right now I'm just gonna I'm gonna do the like uh, I'm gonna. Do the coconut smile, get to that, but right before, or, you know, at the beginning of that, I'll have like well, whatever they're doing. And then Trav, Trav comes home, and then we've got the, he calls the meeting, and that's where all this awesome Hershey's Kiss stuff comes in. And Yeah. <laughs> uh, I still see that shit in my head every time. I, I, like at least once a day, I'm like, <laughs> that's that's a funny visual. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, I don't think I need to say any more than that. God, it ain't much, but I fucking love it. Ooh.
Yeah, I really like this. Fuck yeah. We got to be over 10K by now. I think I wrote at least 500 words. Maybe not that much. Anyways. Please don't stop what you're doing to go check the word count. <laughs> uh, too late, dude. Fuck off, man. <laughs> I wasn't... I'm out That's what I was scrolling down to see what we... Uh, I, I heard your mouse wheel go in, and I was like, this fucker... I, I wasn't asking. I was just wondering. Damn. Yeah, we're at 10,475. I thought so. I knew we put some stank on it. All right, let's see what kind of chicanery yeah, you got, got up to in the barn. Huh? Yeah, 1,200 words in. Yeah. I got more in me, too, probably after a break, but I definitely got more in me. Uh, dude, I love this line. I realize this conversation is headed toward deeper water than he can swim. That's, that's great shit. Thanks. I t un I unhighlighted the stuff that you already read and then highlighted the brand all the brand new stuff. Yeah, I got you. I'm already I'm already into the conversation. In other words, hush for a second. Let me finish it. Let me enjoy it. God damn. <laughs> When I finally do wake up, dude, I'm I'm a goofy ass, so just ignore me. <laughs> the water rises still. All <laughs> Dude, I got fucking goosebumps with that last paragraph. Jesus fucking Christ. As the black curtain grows close closer. Sorry. Why am why did I want to say closure? That's whatever. As the black curtain grows closer. Closer. <laughs> As the black curtain grows closer. 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 Just say fucking closer. As the black curtain grows closer and the sherbet tipped trees become nothing more than silhouettes, we grow quiet. My mind filled with a million thoughts. Costume jewelry and blowjob vacuums dirty dishwater and the mothy dust of cocaine and most importantly how the hell to leave this shithole Ooh, that's that's sexy sorry <laughs> i figured the i figured the idea of in the paragraph where uh shane's all excited about um getting cable and yeah. all the options that, that he's gonna have oh yeah the cartoons hey, Ross. And, i figured that that could be good for <clears throat> Just another like pull toward you know like when he gets this key you know maybe Shane will pop up and say 
so can we get cable? And, and Uncle Trev's like, hell yeah, we're going to get cable. And so this is just another thing that's like, you yeah. know, I'm staying here. I, you know. Yeah. You... <clears throat> I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to read, uh, I'm going to read what I wrote, see how it okay. reads aloud. Um, Cause yeah. I, it's one of those things. Uh, so anyways, what I'm saying is you can mute me if you need to. Where, where um, are you at? Um, I'm I'm only reading like the last uh, page and here where my cursor is. Man's yeah, cutting. Okay. Yeah. No, actually, no. Above that. Um, and there's a whole bunch before that that I that I haven't read that that you haven't read. Um, it's just him laying in bed, going to get a glass of water, hearing what's all going down. Anyways, mom used to tell me stories before bed, fantastic tales and amazing adventures. Once in a blue moon, she'd tell me an old fashioned fable without all the glitz and glamour and daring do. One of my favorites was a simple yarn. <laughs> I swear, I even told myself when I was typing, is like, spell it right. Uh, a simple yarn about a man, a snake, and an eagle. When something like this. Man's cutting his grass with a push mower. He's whistling Dixie. That's how mom put it. And having a grand old time. It's hot, but not too hot. Just perfect, you know? When you're sweating, but there's a breeze that you feel. But there's a breeze and you feel okay and and you feel like you're walking through cool mist this man's cutting his grass he's minding his own good business when a snake drops from the sky and lands on his arm dude pitches a bitch flapping and flailing screaming like his gonads just burst into flames this snake he wraps himself around dude's arm real tight like and he's just a squeezing fire out of dude's forearm and striking at the same time snake keeps jerking forward lightning quick undodgeable jabs but luckily, old dude has on glasses, big thick ones, lenses like the bottom of Coke bottles with black frames. The snake, he's striking, but he's only hitting dude's glasses. Dude hears a screech from the heavens and down swoops an eagle. Now this dude, now, now, I need a comma. Now this dude's got a snake on his arm, snapping at his spectacles, and an eagle slashing valleys like mountain crevices into his flesh. The eagle's trying to grab lunch, and the snake is hell-bent on mainlining some... Just mainlining, I don't need this um, mainlining venom into old dude's circulatory system. And this guy, he's just fighting to survive. The eagle, he finally clamps his beak. The eagle, he finally clamps his beak on that snake's head, twists, and pops the snake's head off like a bottle cap. Snake's body goes limp, lifeless, and the eagle beats wings and flies away, taking the headless snake with it. The dude who was simply trying to cut his damn his damn grass, he's standing there, watering his lawn with the with blood with blood sluicing down and off his arm like a bobsledding team. And he looks down at his wounds, smiles, and silently thanks the eagle. I never understood that story. Like, why does dude thank the eagle who's just torn the shit out of his arm? He should be pissed at both of them, the snake and the eagle, right? Needless to say, I had questions, and my mother, as ever, had answers. Not that I understood them at the time, but she had them. It could have been much worse, right? My mom said, smiling kindly, patiently. But he still got hurt, I said. But he's not dead. Only because of his glasses. Not necessarily. That snake, he might have struck somewhere else eventually. It might have even been po it might might have even been poisonous. Venomous, I said. My, my, my teacher said that snakes are venomous and stuff like roach spray is poisonous. Your teacher's very smart. She tapped the end of my she yeah, she tapped the end of my nose with the tip of one glossy Lee press on. And so are you after a moment of reflection i said but the bird tore him all up i'd be mad but didn't the eagle kill the snake yeah i guess you still don't understand why the man was happy the eagle came along it didn't sound like a question but i shook my head anyway sometimes when we're in trouble a bad thing can be a good thing I just tried i wasn't saying anything because i was trying to think of where to mm -hmm put that in relation to is this in a is this this is you wrote? this is uh can this is the lights out chapter i've i first saw it kind oh of. yeah yeah okay yeah that's a good spot yeah um so it picks up right he snuck out to get a drink of water i don't know if you've read that part yet but uh he sneaks out to get a drink of water they're in the back they're in the master bedroom partying um 
And then that that section, the mom used to tell me stories before bed starts up right after that flower uh, allegory that I wrote. Um, and I was just building off of that with that story. I literally just watched a TikTok this morning about this lady in Silsby, Texas, um, who uh, this literally happened to her. Uh, but it was a it was a snake and a, a hawk. And she was out. Mo- she was out mowing her grass in her front yard. A snake fell out of the sky, landed on her arm, wrapped itself around, and started striking at her. And her glasses are the only just kept hit going for her eyes. Uh, cracked, broke her glasses. But uh, then this hawk, the hawk that had dropped the snake on her to begin with, came down and, and just tore nine shades of hell out of her arm. Um, and Anyways, and then finally he grabbed the snake and took off. And she was like, "I, you know, uh, the guy asked her, are you mad at the snake? And she goes, no, no, he actually saved my life. I'm perfectly fine with it. Uh, and, but I'm, I'm sorry, her arm, <laughs> her arm was fucked up uh, all the way from here to here. It looked like someone had chopped at her arm with a machete. And it, it anyways, it was nasty. So I mm-hmm. took inspiration from that and uh, it is marinating. And then I realized that I could use this for this as, you know, sometimes when we're in trouble, a bad thing can be a good thing. And that kind of a little more subtle foreshadowing other than, you know, hitting the nail on the head kind of deal. I wonder if too, if, if, um, because I, at some point I think we need to <clears throat> like, uh, have Shane re- reflect on, the fact that he's leaving Cassidy behind. And um, I don't know what your idea, what you have for this. Like the, it's obvious that this is, you know, supposed to represent something. And I, I, I you could, it could be seen as, um, you know, Shane could think of the story now. Like I finally get it. Like maybe he thinks he's the Eagle and the family is the Viper. Right. And <clears throat> even though he's got nowhere to go. That's mate. That's and, great. And it will hurt, you know, it will hurt uh, Cassidy to leave. Um, and he won't understand right now, but maybe he will down the road. But ultimately, you know, he, he can't do it anyway, but yeah, take him with it, him or something. It, so what, and, you know, I love double meanings here because it can 100% mean that. It can also mean, you know, stealing the Coke would be, the Coke is a bad thing also, but mm-hmm. stealing it would be a good thing. So I and I do wonder if like their first conversation after he leaves could be Cassidy mad because he didn't get his cable um, uh, right right off the bat because the you because man, you took the drugs and now they won't do the cable <laughs> or, or he could or he could um, he's one of these kids like lots of kids where um, Uncle Trav could say, Every day for four years, we're getting cable, and Cassidy will believe him every time. Yeah, and just see, you know, yeah, we haven't gotten, but Uncle Trav says that, you know, because of this, or we have to wait for this, or, you know, maybe next week, or but we're getting it. Right. So he's still holding out hope, and it's like Shane's just like, dude, it right. ain't coming. Right. Yeah. You know, and um, I think that I don't think we've talked about this part. I, th- I thought maybe the family could argue a little bit about like cocaine is their thing, but they also want money. So they're going right. to try to have some kind of um, rule, you know, like, okay, we'll use this much, right. but we have to, we can't do any more than that. We have to, you know, exactly. maybe- and that could be like a day after conversation. We could open with that where Trav or Rita, whoever is like, all right, we had our fun last night. Now we got to move this so that we can, you know, get rich or whip the fuck ever. Um, yeah. Because and even, even argue from the get go, have one of them, maybe, maybe Bethany or somebody argue at first to not do any of it. And then, and then it's like, it's like haggling. Yeah. Then, because Bethany hasn't used it at that at the, no, she has used. I can't remember if I had her use it or not, but we can change that. I like the yeah. idea of Bethany because, I mean, not giving her too much maternal instinct because she's on coke and smoking while, yeah. you know, the baby. But mm-hmm. also be like, you know, I want to get this fancy shit for my for my kid. So, you know, you're not going to snort all this up. 
I do, I don't want to touch it at all, whatever thing. But I also yeah. think that I had uh, in the section where they, when the during the family meeting, I believe I changed it. It was Hunter trying it, but I changed it to Bethany trying it, um, just just to see if it was legit because she didn't believe it, and neither did Rita. And you know, anyways. But uh, so yeah, it, we we can keep that um, and still have her be like, we shouldn't touch any more of it, but they end up partying that night anyways. Um, I don't know. Maybe Rita was already smoking a joint at one point in time that day. So they could already been high and just went into yeah. it anyways. I don't know. But like but, with the haggling, like, yeah, someone's trying to convince the rest of them. Let's not do any, let's sell them all. And then they kind of compromise. Okay. We'll only do this much. And right. then maybe the next day turns. Okay. Listen, after this much, we're done. Yeah. And then, um, of course, by that time, they don't like have anything. After. No, not not have. Say like it's that's gone. a lot of coke to go through, though. If we're, we're yeah. doing a brick, that's a lot of coke to go through in like a day or two. So I mean, yeah. that's like overdose. Oh, like, big time definitely, overdose. Definitely, yeah. Um, so how how much of, we only want one more day to pass, right? Um, before, yeah, like he, they'll get it. They'll get it late the night that night, and then they'll, you know. Um, Okay, maybe so we, maybe they don't even get a chance to do it the second day. Um, well, no, because he's because he's going to be coming in late at night. That's what I'm getting at. Um, I could I could like foreshadow this with the there's a point in here where, um, hang on, let me. There's a point in Lights Out chapter where, um, uh, Shane sneaks into the living room to get a cup of water. He's not supposed to leave his room after Lights Out. But he's thirsty as hell, can't get to sleep, so he goes out to get a drink, and he hears them back there partying. I could have Bethany say something like, "We said not, we said we just like foreshadow. It's like um, we can't be using all of this. Just like, and then the next day we can expand on that, and have Bethany, you know, saying what whatever about. Uh, anyways, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just trying to find the perfect place to put this, yeah, uh, without running myself in circles. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take another break. I got some more words in me. I don't know what they're gonna be, but I got uh, I got to get up. The the back meat it's Robin, so I'll be back in probably ten minutes, guys. Oh, you want to share your screen? Uh, yeah. And I will try my best to remember to switch it over. Ow. Sorry, I didn't mean to.
Hey, Joe. Okay. Where am I at? Okay.
Oh, good morning. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? Good morning, Joe. I got my morning, Joe, and it's good. Uh, all right. You want me to go back to sharing my screen? Sure. All right. Add to streaming. Uh, and thank you for the uh, uh, cheerleading, Joe. We appreciate it. We have been busy beavers today. I'm going to I'm going to flip this first one. The house smells like dog urine laced reaper. What do you think about that? I don't know. I don't know why I want dog urine to come first, but I'm a, I'm going to leave it. Never mind. I'm probably just being nitpicky. <laughs> be if he curls up on the couch there'd be four people on the couch uh, no aunt rita is in in uncle trav's chair because he's not home yet and well that, uh, that what i'm saying is down here i got uh shane bethany and hunter on the couch that's fine well, well i mean when they because they're, they're not home yet oh okay i got you all right you're you doing can, all right they can tell cassie to you know get on the floor you know, okay. move. 
Or they don't even have to say that because Cassidy knows by now. Right. Somebody okay. walks in the door, you get off the couch. Sounds good. All right. Oh, how many pages? Well, we got we got 30 pages, but a, a couple of those are uh, notes and later passages and uh, plot description. It's hard to it's hard to count pages in uh, in here because these aren't real like pages pages, right? I mean, they're like eight eight by eleven. <clears throat> Got about a, no a novelette's worth of of a book here so far. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it's sexy. Enough. I just added that part. Uh, that's all you can eat under a buck, under Mingo's character. So we can use that later. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good idea.
I, this this just struck struck me. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know why, and there might be a reason for it that shows itself later. But I just added to Shenna's character profile. Um, not sure why, but I feel like she she should always have a copy of the Wasp Factory in her back pocket. Some odd reason that book in particular, and I don't know why. I don't know if you've ever read that one, but oh, what's um, it about? Uh, it is about a young. I, I, I know I don't want to spoil it in case you ever read it, but there's a reveal that the main character isn't the it's like the, it's like the ending of a crying game um, isn't the gender you think they are. Yeah. Um, um, but it it in such a way that they find. I believe they find the body part <laughs> um, at the end. I believe that's the tw- I just spoiled it to, for you, but. Um, yeah, I was gonna say you're like not I'm to sorry. spoil it, but I'm sorry. I just fucking. Anyways, um, I thought it. I thought it was rather obvious, but again, things I I find obvious aren't that obvious to other people. But uh, yeah, it's it's. I think it's uh, Irish Ireland. Um, I think is where it takes place, and all I really remember about it is these wide open fields, like rolling hills, kind of deal. And uh, the, the, I think the relationship between the teenager. I do know that the uh, the the main character is crazy, like a uh, got like serial killer vibes kind of deal. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not Catcher in the Rye. No. Uh-uh. <clears throat> the book I couldn't stand. The Irish Times called it a work of unparalleled depravity. I don't know if I agree with that, but have you ever read Lolita? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. Oh, it's not a good book. It. <clears throat> I bought a copy I, earlier this year. Um, I I have an issue with books like that. That uh, even though you understand and it's very obvious that uh, Humbert Humbert is a monster you know um it's still written in such a way that really affects me because humbert the main character is in love with this young girl um yeah i really don't know much about it i just heard i just heard a little bit and i never i i never ever read a synopsis to a book before i Because then uh, I enjoy, you know, like I enjoy it more. I know that's why I was I was kind of caught off guard when you asked me what the Wasp Factory was about. I was like, how am I going to tell him anything that that would, you know, wouldn't be a spoiler about any of this story? Um, <laughs> so that's why I was having I was struggling with how much to tell you, and I ended up fucking up anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah, Alex said Lolita is a beautifully written book, but it's a disturbing read. Uh, the disturbing part for me is how much he does love Lolita. Like he does the, it's the affection and the, the care. And, but he's still a very, very sick man. Um, Mm -hmm. And there's a book that I read that I had the same feelings for beautifully written. Absolutely hated it though. Uh, And that's my dark Vanessa. I can't remember the author's name, but it's pretty much a Lolita, but from the girl's point of view. Um, And, she, I think she starts having relationship with this teacher. He's in his forties. I believe he's in, when I said, I think, I think he's in his forties. Um, and she's, I believe, uh, I can't remember. I think she's 15 at the time. Anyways. Um, yeah, I believe it's Kate Russell, but, uh, anywho, and the descriptions of the sex scenes, with this 40 year old man and this 15 year old girl it, are written where it feels like the author was going for erotica. Um, and cause it's a, it's from a young girl's point of view and the romanticized the romanticization, whatever of this relationship. I mean, she eventually comes around and understands what happens, what happened. But uh, at the same time, those scenes, man, I cannot, I cannot read 
I can't get behind writing about such a relationship tenderly. Um, and that's why when I did it with the betting of boys, I also made her a serial killer because I didn't want anyone to get it twisted that, you know, this was a terrible person. Um, and the, the scenes that do involve sex are written in a, just to disturb you. You know, it's very obvious mm -hmm. that this is wrong. What is happening is wrong. Um, and in those two books that I mentioned, Lolita and my dark Vanessa, it doesn't feel that way because the characters at the time don't feel like there's anything wrong. So it's written in a realistic sense. At the same time, that stuff makes me sick. Like I, I can't yeah. read that stuff. I can't watch that stuff. Um, I even have a problem with uh, what was that Jonah Hill movie about the nineties, early nineties or something like that. I can't remember, but uh, the, there's a kid actor. He's probably like 12 or 13 at the time. And there's a girl that looks like she's about 16 or 17. And I don't know how they got this approved, but the boy touches her breast on camera. It's covered mm -hmm. by a, a bra, but he still touches her. And I, that had me shaking in rage. Um, and I ended up turning it off. But uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't vibe with that shit. Um, so while it is beautifully written, is what I'm getting at. Um, I would, I, I'd never recommend either one of those books to anybody. So, hmm. and my review was bombarded by, uh, women saying, you don't understand how attractive older men are and how they can get under, I was like, I do understand. And that's why I'm upset. I, if you guys want to read that stuff, I understand it for solidarity and all that stuff. I get it. But at the same time. I can only be honest in my review. Was it well done? Hell yeah, it was well done. Did I enjoy it? Fuck no, I didn't. Anyways. I think the biggest reaction I ever got to a uh, to a review was my review of Game of Thrones and mentioning if you ever want to see women come to bat for a... Uh, uh, come to bat for a statutory rape, go read the reviews of Game of Thrones, uh, and everyone loves the relationship between 13-year-old Daenerys and 30-something Khal Drogo. Uh, they find it romantic and how they, they come together and they're like king and queen for a while. Uh, and <laughs> I'm just like, bruh, don't do this. And everybody's like, well, this happened back in those days. Yeah, but this isn't Earth. This isn't, you know, this is a whole other place called Westeros. We don't have any place called Westeros here. Mm. Right. That's one of the reasons why I don't like uh, modern fantasy uh, very much is because they all play off the same themes of uh, pillaging and rape and sexual violence and all that. I, I don't, I don't mind that in horror, but in fantasy, I want to be taken out of, I want to be taken out of the world we live in. You know, I don't, I don't want those same problems. Yeah, that's why I don't like to read. Uh, I don't understand why someone would want to read or write. Anything that's <clears throat> like COVID related after yeah. we've all been through that. And I, I know that you. there's some books out there and it's like, what? The, I know that there's one out there right now that people are DNFing because it's just like COVID this, COVID that. It's like, dude, we're trying to, you know, too soon. Yeah. King is going to have an issue uh, because the Holly book is a pandemic book. So there's going to be plenty of people that's, <laughs> that's going to get review bombed. I know it is. I'm of, I'm of two mindsets. First off, I don't want to read about it. At, and second, I do want people writing about it. Um, so while I don't want to relive all that bullshit, because it's, we're pretty sure that's what killed my mother. She died February 2020 of an unknown respiratory illness. Uh, and then when I spoke to the respiratory uh, specialist that was seeing her, Dr. Thrasher, over at Jackson Hospital, when I spoke to him, um, months, months later, my niece works up there. So I was up there with her, spoke to him and he said, he said she was probably the very first case we had in Montgomery, um, in, in this area. So I was, I'm way too close to that shit to enjoy something like that. But at the same time, I mean, it was a major event that needs to be documented. So, uh, 
And it, it'd be like, you know, writing about, you know, the 1940s without mentioning World War II is how I look at it. Um, do I want to read that right now? Hell no. But I do think people should be writing these stories. It feels like horror is really the only genre that's acknowledging the pandemic and fiction. I'm sorry about your loss. Thank, thank you, Joe. It, it's been years and I'm better. But yeah, I haven't been the same since. Oh, I'm, I'm sure Holly will be at least decent because it's Holly. I love pure escapism fiction, but that's where I'm at with my life right now, too. So. Um, da -da -da. I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm not doing anything. Back in black. Chat had a snack. I especially love uh, escapism movies. Like, I don't want anything like realistic in my movies right now. Oh, I was just going to recommend a movie, but <clears throat> that I saw yesterday. Best okay. movie I've seen all year. But if you're not looking for, uh, yeah, realism, then. Well, just tell me what it is. It doesn't mean I'm going to. There's a watch brand it. new movie called. I had to watch it for my podcast, uh, Final Guys. <clears throat> um, it's on Prime. You gotta rent it for like six bucks or something. It's called The Passenger, and I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know if it was haunted house or alien invasion. I I didn't know anything um, going in, which is the way I like to read books and particularly watch movies. So, <clears throat> man, yeah, best thing I've seen all year by far. Amazing, amazing says movie. Passenger official trailer horror zombie. No, 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 it's not a, no. There are a few, few. Uh, it's 2023 movie. Yeah, that's the one I'm looking at. Um, hang it's on. Got a red. It's got a red cover. Yeah, I see. I see that. But what's coming up for that trailer is it's got a van on the cover. A van with headlights. Anyways, I'll I'll, I'll watch the trailer. No. Uh, see if I can figure out which one. Um, hang on. Uh, a man is forced to face his fears and confront his troubled past. That sound familiar? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. He must find a way to survive when his coworker snaps and goes on a violent yes. spree. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, maybe that's what they mean by zombie. I don't. I don't know. Um, because it's yeah, the it's same. Not a, it's not a zombie. It's not even close. I don't, I don't know why the the trailer down here says that. Um, because it's it's the movie you're talking about. Oh, I love this fucking actor. I love that dude. Um, the one with the facial hair in this. Mm -hmm. He's a great, amazing. Everybody actor. in this movie is absolutely amazing. The cinematography, yeah. the soundtrack, it is amazing. <clears throat> and it's very edgy your seat. It's also a little bit of a slow burn in parts because it's a it's a it's a character. Uh, um, Study, like character study, kind of. Yeah, so so good. Ooh, Idris Elba. Yeah, I'll watch that. Um, Idris is my uh, one of my wife's hall passes, so she'll be happy as hell. Oh my God! Thank fuck. Sorry, I just got approved for something that I have been desperately waiting on. Oh, congratulations! Absolutely, desperately waiting on. Fuck yeah! All right, so we're good for the rest of the year. Woo! Praise Pickleberry Jesus. Oh, oh, that is a weight off my chest. Hell, you good? You just making sure you know your stream is still off. If you, if you need oh, to yeah. be off, that's fine. But I'm just, you don't have to if you don't want to. Good to hear you. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. You getting approved for that bad dragon sponsorship. Bad Dragon sounds like a, a strain of weed. Oh, good. I can go get some gummies. 
speaking of weed, I can go get some gummies. Oh, fuck yeah, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It's $300 less than I thought, but yeah. I only needed, I got a, a thousand extras. So if it's 300, I'm still up seven. Okay, cool. I'd smoke that. I'd smoke that for a dollar. Dude, how do you feel? Sorry to bother you, but mm -hmm. how do you feel about Robocop? I haven't seen it since the 80s. Damn. Like, I was thinking about that was another one of those movies that uh, it was so, like, high budget, low budget kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so well done. Um, and I was thinking about all these movies and everything that I watched as a kid that actually hold up um, nowadays, like Predator, uh, uh, Monster Squad, uh, RoboCop. Um, and the list goes on, dude, like Beetlejuice, you know, a bunch of weird shit that we don't see, uh, uh, Big Trouble in Little China, all that stuff. I'm just thinking we need more stuff like that. I want more big budget, low budget, big budget movies with low budget ideas. Have you seen, uh, this isn't really in that realm, but, uh, have you seen Psycho Gorman? Yes, I have. Yeah, I, okay. I enjoyed it for what it was, but the and I'm I'm probably gonna get in trouble for saying this. The little girl annoyed me. Um, growing oh my up, gosh, dude! I knew on Final like Guys, <clears throat> on Final yeah. Guys, that was our hundred percent absolute favorite character. Uh, yeah, I fi I figured everyone. She was hilarious. Everyone loves her, and I knew a girl like that growing up. That was just like the biggest fucking bully, and. I don't know. It's something about her voice, and it just absolutely the way people feel about the little boy in Babadook, which I enjoyed because I thought it was a realistic <laughs> rep representation of a kid like that. Um, my uh, my sister has a kid like that, anyways. But uh, I would take the kid from Babadook a million times over before the the girl from uh, oh Psycho Gorman. You, I think you're alone. I yeah, I know alone I'm alone. I know I am. Trust me, I understand completely. Um, and I got in trouble with in my review too. It's like, you know, like strong, independent. Okay, all right. I'm sorry. No, uh, that's not what I was saying at all. Uh, what I was saying was, was that she annoyed me because she reminds me of someone that I hated. <laughs> well, the guy who did Psycho Gorman is doing a uh, what's supposed to be another. 80s type thing that that is more like uh critters and ghoulies Ooh, i love me some critters. so I, i'm sure it's probably, got of, much, but... it's probably got a ton of it's probably got a ton of uh uh like uh practical effects and all that kind of stuff in it yeah mm. i agree the 80s were basically weird ideas for movies getting big budgets exactly and we don't do that anymore like they don't throw enough movie at weird uh, enough money at weird shit and need more weird shit anyways i think you i'm gotta dig, I think, you gotta go, dig go deeper for it you gotta get dig deep deeper for it and hit the indie movies yeah which indie movies has always been mostly better i mean with the exception of some you know great movies that are you know, big blockbusters, but of course I'm, I'm, I'm not a superhero guy at like at all. The only, <clears throat> the last superhero movie I saw was the first Iron Man. And I've only seen, I don't know how long ago that was a while ago, but no, that's not true. Uh, my youngest wanted me to watch Guardians of the, uh, the Galaxy with him. So <laughs> I, I did watch that, but I haven't seen any of the other Iron Mans or Thor or, all these other Marvel and DC movies, I've I've watched none of them. I can't stand them. I will say that I have finally gotten tired of them, but those shits were my jam for the longest time. Just because, like I said, I'm in that escapism uh, time of my life, and I just want to have fun. So that's literally yeah, I get all that. I want out of a movie. Um, and I was surprised at how deep some of them got. Of course, the, the majority of them are not deep whatsoever. But mm -hmm. there was some really, really good character development for certain characters uh, that that absolutely broke my heart when bad things happened to them, like Wanda and uh, the Vision. Uh, there's se several things like that. And the uh, WandaVision TV show just fucking broke my heart. Uh, but other than that, we haven't watched anything else since Endgame. 
Um, we we used to watch every single movie the day it came out, and now we're just like, nah. Oh, my my oldest went to go see the Barbie movie. We were expecting like some kind of uh, fanning at the at the end, you know, when they got into the car screaming, hooting, and hollering. Uh, but we asked them how how it went, and they're like, I liked it, but I cried a lot. I'm like, you cried a lot in the Barbie movie, and uh, uh, supposedly the movie is surprisingly deep. Um, it's got a very strong feminist theme to it, uh, and it's all about just building people up. Um, and some of the messages they really hit home for them. So I, I was like, damn, I wish I had watched it. But they wanted specifically. They're 18 now. They wanted specifically to go out by themselves. Um, and they didn't want any, they didn't even want us at the movie theater seeing a different movie. They wanted to be dropped off and, you know, we'd come back and pick them up. And, uh, so I was, I was proud of that. They want to do that because they have really bad anxiety. Um, and it went really, really well. And they look, they absolutely loved the movie, but said it was an emotional roller coaster. I'm like, I was just expecting, you know, goofy Mattel shit, but, uh, and I was thinking about it, and I don't know if you feel this way or not. You probably don't. Maybe I'm thinking too deep into it. But I kind of hate that when women's like childhood stuff, like their toys, is made into a movie, it is so much deeper than any of the shit that we get. We get like G.I. Joe movie that is just hollow, empty bullshit. We get Transformers, even the He-Man adaptations, just utterly vapid bullshit. Um, and it, it pisses me off that, you know, if you want, if you have something that's directed at boys, to give them something a, a deeper experience than what the fuck you know they're, they're used to, um, or you know something along those lines where you know the character has aged with the fans, um, like Barbie. You know, so so many generations of women have grown up with Barbie; it's a staple. Um, but I mean, we could. I it probably wouldn't sell very well. Don't get me wrong, but we could have a GI Joe movie about a, a, a veteran with PTSD, you know, we could, we could have something deeper in there than just bullshit fluff. Um, and I might be alone there, but I would love something like that. Uh, like having, like breaking down in like a Transformers movie, what makes you human? You know, what, what would be the difference between these machines that have emotions and feelings and, you know, their own thoughts and loves and hates and all that stuff. What makes that any different than than humans? That kind of thing. Um, but it, none of these things go that deep. My complaint about the Barbie movie is that it feels very toothless in any criticism it tries to provide toward Mattel. Um, also, the pacing is odd and certain plots are resolved without feeling earned. That, that's fair enough. Uh, all, all, I, all I can go off of, because I haven't seen it myself, is uh, how my oldest felt. Yeah, Bumblebee was Bumblebee was good. You're absolutely right, Alec. But any of the ones that are just oh, any of the main mainline movies, no. I would love that. I'm rewatching Star Trek: The Next Generation, and there's a lot of that with the character Data. Data. It's Data. It's Data. They call him Data. Anyways. <laughs> Stop sharing. Okay. Um, I don't think I have anything else left in me. Um. Okay. So uh, I know you're I know you're snacking, but uh, take your time. I can talk with chat. Uh, to, to be honest, uh, though, super proud of your kid, and if they loved it, that's all. Yes, yeah, they they did. They they truly had a very deep experience with that. So, <clears throat> but uh, I love everything we've done today. Everything, like we got some real progress going. And then tomorrow we can tackle. At least uh, either I can start or you can start. I know you're you've been layering. I I want you to be able to write one of these two chapters. It's, it seems like you keep getting. I I keep pushing farther ahead, and you keep you know coming along. Uh, not coming along, but uh, having spending so much time having to blend and fix what I'm writing. Well, I'll probably. Uh... You're fine, dude. Take your time. Nobody's in a rush. I was expecting this to go three hours anyways. At some point today, I'll probably uh, <clears throat> finish the scene so t t um, the two things can be merged. 
together. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm super burnt out today, still trying to get work done. Yeah, I slept really well last night, but it was only like four or five hours sleep. And uh, then I woke up and I felt like I had been stoned last night. And I haven't had gummies in two nights, not since Sunday. Um, I felt like I was, you know, like you wake up and you're still high after a, a night of whatever. Um, and so I was really dragging my ass around. Um, I even I threw my laptop on my bed and flopped down in the bed. And Michelle goes, are you okay? She's like, she's just waking up. I'm like, no, I don't want to be awake. <laughs> it sounded like a fucking toddler. But, uh, yeah, that's why I took yesterday off, because I was just mentally and physically just completely spent. Uh, I tried to write. I got a new uh, novella, novelette, something that I'm writing called Folk Horror. Uh, and I got a considerable ways into it. But halfway through the first chapter, I had changed the main character's name um, without even realizing it. I just started calling him something different. And then I went back and wasted so much time rereading this, trying to figure out where this new character came from. And I, then I realized it's the same character. I just called them something completely different. So I had to go back and fix all that. And that's when I realized I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm calling off for tomorrow. I'm a, uh, I'm telling Chad, I can't do it. <clears throat> I've only done that one other time. And that's why I took a break because the last time I did something like that, it was burnout. So but I don't have any feelings of burnout while working with Chad because I mean, we're still progressing moving forward and both of us are writing. So no matter what the word count is getting bigger. Uh, even when some of, even if both of us only did 500 words, we'd still add a thousand words to it. So this is easy. This is light work. It's my own work that's suffering because I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <sighs> I was on the heat a lot yesterday. Oh, that'll do it. That'll do it. Uh, I think I might need to just get rid of this. Uh, no, we might still use it. There's a later scene down here concerning Cassidy stealing baking soda and or cornstarch. I don't know if I'm going to have this him, them send him off. If we're going to use it or not. Um... But that was just me trying to get Cassidy out of the out of the house so that uh, Shane could find the earring alone. Uh, but that's that's taken that's taken care of now. Yeah, I'm very happy with this. Oh. I knew today wasn't going to be a big word count day for me because. But, uh, but I am happy, had I, had I not also, here's another thing that I love about working with you, Chad, is that when I'm not feeling it, like this morning, I wasn't feeling it, I didn't want to write a word, and then I read your stuff, and that, your stuff is so fucking motivational, it's like good music, and when you're a musician and you hear good music, or you're a mm -hmm. songwriter and you hear a good song, you immediately want to go pick up your guitar, or get at the piano, or whatever, and write yeah. your own. And that's what happened today. I got in here, read what you wrote and what you were writing. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Let's let's go. Let's go. Good no, art sir. makes good art. So I might just read later. Yeah, I, I'm uh, I started Broad Street Bastard last night, um, only got like three or four pages and then I passed out. Um, but I'm See, folks, it's boring. Don't buy it. No, put, I, I, put I, your I, right to sleep. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to dive into it as soon as I get done here. Um, and I didn't want to, I was just so fucking tired, uh, because all of Chad's stuff starts off and it's just like, we're already in it. Let's go. Uh, that's how I feel with your books. E. <laughs> uh, when I'm lacking motivation, I pick up the sound of broken ribs and read another chapter. That's awesome. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate that. I love that book. I love the pacing of that book. There is not a single moment where something isn't happening. Uh, so much so that I didn't put chapters in it. I just put page breaks because I didn't want anything distracting the reader from part one and part two um, other than part one and part two, where it's like, this is where I want you to stop. I might have page breaks and you can stop if you want to, but this is where I want you to stop. And then the next one, you got to do that one at, at full speed too. So I love how that 
book feels like a an hour 45 two hour movie that's just intense all the way throughout i'm very very proud of that book <clears throat> and that's one of the biggest compliments i've got about it is the, is the pacing so but yeah, anyways anybody here got any questions or anything for us uh before we go anything y'all want to say because your boy tired and i still got to go grocery shopping Also, thanks everybody for hanging out with us and uh, yeah. uh, writing with us or do doing whatever you guys are doing while uh, we're over here banging on the keyboard. Uh, I got a comment the other day about the ASMR quality of your your clickety clacks, so uh, you, you're making people happy. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I've also gotten several comments uh, about how motivational and inspirational these streams have been, so I'm very very happy. It's a fantastic idea. It was Chad's idea. For anybody who doesn't know, it's Chad's idea. He snuck it in on me in a live stream. He was in chat and he was like, uh, you, know, you know what I think would be really cool if uh, you collaborated with someone live? And da -da -da. I was like, oh, you sneaky fuck. Are you, are you offering again? Are you <laughs> offering again? Come on, hit me with it. It's like, yeah, I am offering. And then, and then I missed his comment. And like 15 minutes later, he comes back and he goes, since you didn't read my comment, Here's what I said. I'd love to do it. So this is 100% Chad. Uh, anyways, but I'm having a blast, man. This is I'm, I'm looking forward to this every day that we do it. Uh, yeah. I'm off to get ready for work, but you two have a good rest of your day. Great job as always. Thanks, Joe. Uh, you have a good one too, Alec. Uh, bye, Viking. Is there anybody else in here? There's six people in here, but I don't know who all is in here. I think it's just Alec and everyone else that I mentioned. Oh, J-Rod. I don't know if you're here. Bye, J-Rod. Uh, Chad, anything you want to say before we go? No. No. No words of inspiration. No, uh, no. You, tell them where people can find you. <laughs> he he hate he hates that. I just like picking on him about it. But anyways, until next time, guys, all hail the chair. Doo -doo -doo.